Why do I call it prison rules? Some of it's pretty obvious, I guess. But uh, I have a saying at my school. The prison rules don't look at me, bitch. No offense to bitches anyway. All right? So what I mean by that is we talked a little bit before. The head controls the direction of movement. All right? The hips give him his power. All right? They give him his ability to move. So if I'm on top and I'm in a dominant position, what should a person in a dominant position do? I like that. What else? Be dominant. <laughs> dominant. If I'm in a dominant position, I want to be dominant. All right? So when you think about, we'll talk more about this, I think later today I gotta do a talk in the theater of strategy and see if four or five people come to that. But when I think about what my job is to do, is I want to have him make a mistake. All right? So if he sucks, he doesn't know jujitsu, my job's super easy, I can just wait. Eventually he'll make a mistake. Look at Hoist Gracie in UFC 1, all right? Look at any of the uh, Gracie in action tapes. They get on somebody's back, they lift their head, they didn't have to wait very long, they choke them out, no problem. Unfortunately, we play with people who actually know jujitsu, so usually waiting for a mistake, unless we're significantly better than them, doesn't really pay off that well. So I have two other options. You can trick them into making a mistake, all right? So that usually means your technique is significantly better than theirs, right? or you're smarter than them, I'm not that smart. So I tend to revert to option three, force the mistake, all right? I want his elbow to come up. My whole game from side control is I want control of this arm, always, all right? There's a couple different ways I can get it, all right? So an easy arm bar, all right, would be as long as I can get underneath this elbow, if I move him a little bit, I spin, fall to the side, very easy. The challenge is how do I get him to lift his elbow? I've tried asking nicely, it doesn't seem to work so well. So instead we're gonna use something called the what time is it grip. I know people don't tend to wear watches all that often anymore, but if you did, this is how you would look at your watch. All right? Now, this is from Rob Kahn, who's a very mean person. But if you wanna make this work appropriately, all right, I could do it from here, apply pressure for sure. But if I align my arm with my shoulder more and then drive forward, I'll have more structural integrity so I can apply more pressure. So I get here, I drop my shoulder back, right? And then I run it through his face. As I run it through his face, I'm gonna turn it slightly. And I'm looking for this nerve cluster right here, all right? And this does not have to be a one and done. Unfortunately, people have different levels of tenacity and strength and durability. So if it doesn't work the first time, don't give up, people. Do that shit again. So right here, come back, run for. Hey, look, his elbow's up. Sweet. Now I can rip my arm bar if I want to. Catch. Fall to the side, come over. When you do this to each other, just think to yourself, you can be nice to each other later. Right now, the goal is to inflict maximum fucking damage, all right? Get right here, come back. So you have that good structural integrity, and you're gonna drive through as you turn it a little bit. Bring your chest in, hips low. So how you doing, buddy? Oh, dude. Catch that arm. I'm good, good. All right, bring your knee in. Swing over and hit him in the face with your leg. Don't do this shit. It's too nice and gives too much space. Right on his face. Fall this way, because you have to lift this knee. If I don't lift this knee and he's good, he's gonna jump my knee and I have problems. So the second you land, you're gonna fall. What's gonna help you with the fall? Active toes. If you keep it like this and you fall, you can hurt your wrist. Er, that's not a wrist. You can hurt your ankle. <laughs> Active toes, turn. One more time, big guy. So right here, come back. Drive in. Right. Catch. Fall to the side. Bring the leg over. Make sense? What? Nice. Make the instructor move. Jeez. All right. Right here. Everything's good. Come back. Catch the arm. All right. <laughs> Fall to the side. Come over and finish. Make sense? Three, two, one. <laughs> All right. This is 
is where it's really good that someone from my school came because you know, demonstrating this on someone who doesn't know me very well probably wouldn't give me a lot of friends. Um, a couple things. Just stand up for me. When we do this grip, I want the pressure to be here. All right, there's a little nerve cluster there. That's where I want the pressure. All right? So you really have to make sure you turn that wrist over. All right? So that's number one. Number two, I'm seeing a bunch of people as they're going for the arm bar. They're stepping over, right? Or they're leaving this leg behind. When you go for this arm bar, we're gonna pivot on the knee that's closest to his hips, right? So when I drive in and I pivot, I'm pivoting that right against his body. So I'll, it's nice. I'm, uh, I'll be very nice and gentle for you. There you go. All right? So you don't say anything about Catch that arm. This leg, I pivot on this leg. So my knee is going to be closer to his hip angle. My foot comes underneath his shoulder, right? So I pivot. I do not step over his head. If I step over his head, there's way too much space, and it doesn't hurt at all, right? I don't want that. I swing that leg over, and the outside of my leg impacts his face. So when I swing it over, so my leg is on his face. All right, leg is heavy on his face. And when I drop, I'm dropping the side. My leg gets heavier on his face because now all my weight is going on his face, all right? And then I come over, beautiful finish. Does it make sense? Sure. Let's do it a few more times. Three, two, one. All right, so I uh, believe I showed that one last time I was here. I think I showed that series last time I was here. But I want to go over a couple other things too. So again, I always want this arm. Whether I get inside this arm, which makes getting the path to mount very, very easy, or whether I control and dominate this arm. I always want to try and control this arm first. If I can't control this arm, then I'll try and control the other arm. But it's always about, my game's always about control. So it's trying to find some limb that I can dominate, take control of that limb, and then slowly inch my way towards the submission. That's kind of the way I think about jiu-jitsu. All right, so one of the ways that we can do this, and it's pretty common, so again, this lazy ass position, all right? But it's just better than you would think, and it's lazy, so I can get my breath back because I get tired fast. You just want to make sure that you're not straight up and down, so that if they push you away, you fall back, or worse, get like some sort of weird triangle, or sometimes people try and grab my head if I get lazy. But if I'm in tight, snug, it's difficult to remove me. My hip's connected to their hip, so I'm thinking about making sure I keep my hip connected to their hip, so if he moves, I can follow him, stay nice and tight. My elbow is very tight to his body. If he bumps, it doesn't really do anything to me. If he wants to bump aggressively, I start doing shit like this. This is my break, right? So if he bumps, <laughs> okay, bump, <clears throat> all right? So that's kind of fun. But one of the things that I'll do is a lot of times people push, right? Because this sometimes works really well. If they keep their elbows low, they push, the hip escape away. Oh, if they do it really well, he might be able to bring his knee inside and arm bar me. Oh, Jesus, he caught the coach. Oh, shit. That sucks. So I have to be aware of that. But if I see any separation on this side with this hand, any separation at all, I say thank you and then I take his arm. All right? It's very easy. All right? My hand's already ready to go. It's just this. All right? And then I turn my body so I collapse my weight on top of his arm. So now it's very difficult for him to get his arm back. From here, I pull this hand around and I control the bottom of his arm. Right? So I have good control of his arm. Now I'm going to take my knee that's closest to his head and I'm going to say hello to his chin. I bring my knee up. Don't smash him in the face, please. Right? Even I don't do that. And I can drive it straight across, but I don't usually do that either. I want to catch it gently and then I drop it not so gently. This hand comes through, fold, get this grip, all right? Now when we finish the Kimura, all right, and again, this is not the perfect position for the Kimura because if he's really good, he might be able to get his hand inside your knee, all right? And then if he does that, he's almost always going to be able to escape. Let's assume he's not quite that good yet. What I don't want to do is rip up, all right? Hold your arms tight together. That's why we don't rip up. Right? Everybody can hold on to that for a very long time. 
Don't do that. I rip this way, all right? And I don't do a lot of ripping motions to my students because that's where you can injure someone. But this one, luckily, we're only going from here to here. So a violent motion from here to here is almost never going to hurt somebody. If I was doing a violent motion this way when they're holding on really tight, then there's the potential to jack up their shoulder, right? And we're certainly not going to be violent because we like each other and we're actually finishing it. But I'm going to try and rip it. I'm going to do two tries. And any more than that, I get too tired. So I'm going to rip once this way. If it doesn't work, I go rip. You don't have to say rip. If it doesn't work, shit. Now I'm going to be a little meaner. I'm going to step away. And I'm going to rake his head back with me as I rip again. All right? So what's going to happen is I'm going to rip his head back. Rip up. Now when I think about finishing, I lift and then I park. I don't do this. I don't do this. Too much rotation. Look how far his arm can bend. Oh, you bastard. I wish my shoulders did that. So I lift, I park, and I drop. All right, so look at the difference. Park, drop. Make sense? All right, do it one more time. Everybody move. All right, so I'm here. I'm looking for that little elevation of this hand. And this can happen anywhere. At any point in time, you're I can be here. I see that arm. All right, come back around, control. All right, come in. Catch that chin, drop. And this, scrape all the skin off his rib cage. As deep as you can get it, fold and drop your weight. And then for these moves, there's certain grips that every time I grip, I slap the shit out of it. It's not gonna hurt him. But there's that little shock factor. I don't know, it seems to help. Make sure when you get the camera grip, you need to see at least two inches past your wrist. If I'm just here, and he twists hard, he can hurt my wrists. And that's not the point. Deep and a motorcycle your wrists. Heavy, heavy, heavy. You can even drive that point in a little bit if you want to. It's fun. And then rip to the side, lift, park, drop. Make sense? All right, three, two, one. So I want the near side arm, but you know, I don't always get what I want, unfortunately. Shit happens. So sometimes I gotta go for that loop. One of the grips that I'll play a little off the near side arm looks pretty stupid, but actually works reasonably well. I do a lot of that head pressure with, the, with my knees, pushing them down and stuff like that. I find that entertaining. But get control of this wrist, my elbow's tight, and then I pin his hand to his body. Because right? remember, what we were talking about earlier is as long as this arm is up, I can attack it. All right, so what makes this really easy, if I do this, I bring my knee in, so now I've lifted his arm, and so I have the ability now to come up, I think right in the armor. All right, unfortunately, that's my guys are getting wise to that shit, so it doesn't seem to work that well anymore. So what I do now is, as they're kind of trying to deal with this grip a little bit, they offer up the other hand. And I grip the hand. I'm not gripping the wrist here, I grip the hand like the bottom part of his hand, I want this grip, all right? So I'm here and here, and again, I hug my elbows in tight. When my elbows are in tight, I'm stronger than if they're extended from my body, all right? So I'm here, and I control, all right? Let him move around a little bit, and we just stay snug. I'm staying snug based on my hip contact with his hip and my elbow being tight. That's how I'm staying snug. Make sure your top shoulder is down a little bit. The second you start doing this, you're going for a ride. Been there, didn't like it. All right, push out a little, now there's space in his arm. My hand comes back, comes through. And just give him like a nice little look. Yeah, just come right here. Say hey buddy, all right? Now from here, we're gonna try two different things, all right? One, I get eh, maybe 30 to 50% of the time. If not, then I'll move on. So what's gonna happen, I'm gonna go from my hand on my ear to my fingers about by my chin. And the way I'm gonna do that is, I'm gonna move up. Once I've moved up, I rest my weight on that arm a little bit. I release the hand, but I have to have weight here so it doesn't just pull it out. And I'm gonna wrap. As I wrap, my body squares. So right now I'm still kinda of on my edge. Now my body squares. Hold right here. Squeeze. 
That's the bicep slicer, bicep crush. So sometimes it doesn't work, all right? That's the plans, right? So that doesn't work, I bring my knees tight to his body, which they're already there. And I'm gonna pull him back to me and twist slightly. So as I pull him back to me, twist, release, get the grip. And then I may jump to the back and jump for an arm bar from here. It depends, if he's not that strong, then you know, I'll go for it right from here. All right. If they're very strong, then I'm normally gonna step and come back to the arm bar. All right. Kind of dealer's choice, I guess. Okay, we're here. I usually start with this grip. Remember, we can always, if we get underneath, kind of come in and go to the arm bar from there if we want to. If not, I get this grip, hook tight. All right, this is important. If you're just doing this lazy shit, it's not gonna work. You're gonna be like, Jay sucks. The stuff you showed me didn't work. If you do it right, it'll work sometimes. All right, <laughs> all right so right here. Make a little bit of space, come inside. You okay? All right, come right here. Extend, and you're gonna have to drop the weight on the hand a little bit, because if you don't, it's gonna pull it out. So when I release, there has to be some weight, otherwise that hand's gone. I go to wrap, as I wrap, I square my body. Hold, hold, squeeze. Again, not, this will not always work. Usually it will, not always. Bring your knees in tight, pull them to you. Turn, as I turn, I'm doing this. Comes through, get the grip. Grip arc, or if they're too big, come directly to the arm bar. There's the other option where I can kind of bring this in. Come here too. That works sometimes. And then rip, lift, park. Or again, just come around all the way to the arm bar. Make sense? All right, three, two, one. So I'll show you one thing real quick that I showed last time I was here. And then that's not what we're going to do now, but I'll show it to you in case you haven't seen it before. Yeah, I want to be, as I mentioned a bunch of times, control of this arm whether I'm dominating or attacking this arm, or whether I'm just getting inside the arm, all right? If you get inside the arm, realistically, you should probably just go to mount, because it's like the safest and easiest transition to mount. That's usually what I do. But sometimes if I'm working on some shit, or just want to torch them a little bit, then I'll do some attacking here as well. The easiest way I find to get inside this arm is I have both my hands on one side. I run my hips towards his feet, try and turn them over a little bit. I try and dig my hip inside this space and then I blast back. So if my fat ass can do it, I'm sure all of you can do it, all right? One thing to keep in mind is that when I have both my hands on this side, you have some crafty people that are very good with Grammy rolls and stuff like that. So I have to keep some pressure on him because I don't want him to just turn this way, run, kick his leg up and put me back in the guard. That would make me really sad. So the way that I avoid that is I keep my chin on his chest, all right? And so what you guys can do if you want, before you do anything else, just put the chin on his chest and then have him try and turn away from you. Kind of weird, but it works. So, something to play around with. So again, I kind of have both arms on this side. We're here. A little bit of pressure, and then I want to run this way, all right? So that now I feel that my hip is inside that elbow. Once I feel my hip is inside that elbow, then I'm going to climb back. And once I have that arm there, I don't want him to get it back. So I have to keep my elbow and my knee tight. All right, if I start giving him too much space, you know, he might be flexible or something else, you know, then I'm not a problem. There's a number of attacks that we will run from here. And we'll go through, I think, three. All right, I'll show you the one we did last year real quick and then we'll move on. But from here, I want to make a little space with his elbow. All right, because I want to punch down inside here. All right. And he does not want this elbow to move. So to get this elbow to move, you may have to employ some devious measures, all right? <laughs> which I'm all right with. I can use my knuckles to get some space and then get a block here. All right? Once there's space, this is going to sound weird, but just go with me. Pretend you're going to suck your thumb. Pretend. All right? And as you lift that hand up, you punch down. All right, 
This is a good spot for me. <laughs> right. Now, the one that we did last year that will just go real quick, it's much nicer than the next one we're going to do, is I would again pivot on that knee that's by his hip. My other leg would go over his arm that's on the floor. And then I fall back. My leg comes up. Keep your hand. Now you're hurting his arm, his neck, and you can choke him too. So that's the nice one that we did last time. So for those of you who remember that one, good on you. All right. Again, I'm here, keeping that chin down. I'm here. I run a little bit to the side, get those hips in. Get control of that arm. Okay, good. Bring this hand in, be as devious as you want. Get a little bit of space. Lock. Pretend to suck your thumb. Punch down. When you punch down, I need to bring my hips into play. All right? All right. Don't do that too many times or it'll be creepy. All right? <laughs> You're right here. Now, instead of stepping over the other leg, because I have complete control of his arms, I'm going to step over with the other leg first. All right? I could do some evil shit here if I want to, but I'm going to step now over with the other leg and come back. This is a good spot. So if you like cervical cranks, you have a plethora of them here. All right? I have the arm. All right? And then I can still go for the triangle. Now again, the other one's faster, easier, a little less douchey. But if you're here, you might as well at least try the super mean one <laughs> once or twice, right? Big step, turn, step. And here you just have a nice conversation. So how have you been? Yeah. Uh, you can go here, and go here. All right, it's like a little choke and crank. Pull the head, take the arm, take this, take this. Kind of pick which one you want. <laughs> Make sense? All right, let's do it, three, two, one. <laughs> Thinking about controlling the limbs, right, is going to improve your ability to dominate and then take them home with you. Right? So I always seek control first. Right? Control first, then attack. Right? So I want stable positioning, I want to take away a limb, and then I want to break it. Right? If I'm thinking about tricking, so we talked before, so we're showing forcing. Sometimes, particularly if you're rolling with somebody you haven't rolled with that much before, so they don't know what all your little tricks are, then you get into that more of a tricky game, right? Remember we talked before briefly about the break, right? The break can be a very effective trick, right? I always want the elbow to come up, right? So if the elbow comes up, the higher up it comes, the easier it's going to be for me to do what I want to do, right? So I think I showed this one last year too, but somebody was asking me about it, so I hope I this is a distraction, but I have to make it distracting. Different people get distracted or get irritated in different ways. Some people, if I do this to them, they do nothing. They don't care. Right? Some people care. Some people, if I do this to them, this <laughs> irritates them significantly more than me pushing their face. Some people get really mad when I do this. Right? So any one of these is a way to distract somebody. Close their eyes. Hold their mouth. All right? So all this little dirty distraction shit works great. What normally happens when someone gets irritated or distracted, they want to smack your annoying little hand out of the way, which is good. That's what I want them to do. All right? And they're going to use one of two hands to do that. And I'm going to respond depending on which hand they use. If they use the near side hand, which is the one I showed last time, whether I'm doing this, doing this. If he pushes my hand away, he gave me his arm every time. My hips come up, and I drop this hip on this elbow with a big step. Right here. Who here has been to Disney World? All right. <laughs> you know when you're driving down the highway to go to Disney World, but you're not sure where it is? 
So you check one exit. Oh, it's not there. You check the other exit. Oh, it's not there. You check the last exit. Oh shit, it's Disney World. Make sense? So when I think about submissions, I want to try and go lowest risk first. So if I can try something, I'm not going to spend a fucking day trying to get that one submission to work and get tunnel vision. Then he's going to escape and i got to chase him again. I'm just going to check it real quick. If it's there, awesome. If it's not there, I'm on to the next thing. Make sense? Yeah. So again, we're here. This is the one that irritates Sean the most. <laughs> <laughs> See? I told you. All right. All right. Check the first exit. What I'm doing with this one, I'm sinking my ribs into his elbow as I take his hand and go this way. So all it is is a Kimura. I just sink and rip. Tap. If that one doesn't work, it wasn't Disney World. I switched the wrist. Somebody was asking about wrist locks. I switched the wrist. Tap. If that still doesn't work, I gather this arm. I gather this arm. Two is better than one. Come forward. Bring my knee up. Bring my leg over. One step. Be mean. Chomp. Catch the arm, sit back, take the arm bar. Make sense? Uh, let's do it. Three, two, one. Now, one of the things that's going to happen also, if they aggressively try and start to hip escape, <laughs> this arm comes across at all. Anytime I see this arm come across, it could be because he pushes my hand away, I pin it get control, get nice and snug. We talked about this one before, but there's this cool little submission off in here, which is surprising, although it violates one of my main rules, but I'm gonna show you anyways, because it's fun. So the way it violates one of my main rules is if I miss it, I'm kind of giving up a better position. So, so it's kind of one of those Hail Marys, if I'm just screwing around that I'll play around with, but I like doing it, so. I sit back, my back leg comes over, then this leg, and I sit through. Oh. <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty awesome, <laughs> It's like a neck crank choke hurt thing. <laughs> yeah. That's a pretty good And sometimes it hurts the arm a little bit too, like a trifecta. It's pretty, pretty awesome. So again, it could be the distraction. It could be that he's starting to Elbow skip away and he pushes. I want this. Get this. So this is that control. This control is very difficult to deal with. There is the ability sometimes to smash him and try and get a tap. I kind of walk into his head. I don't have a lot of success with that though. This one though I have more success with. Really hold this tight. Punish him a little bit. Don't, don't be in a hurry. Kind of grind it in. It's tighter the better. All right? I'm going to lean forward and I start to turn. My back leg comes over first. Then the next leg. And what's gonna happen, I'm gonna sit down in this position, and I'll pull his head up. So as I sit down, I'm pulling the head up. Make sense? All right, let's do a three, two, one. So this next one is a different way that I think about the north-south. I was showing some other guys over here before, but it runs off that same inside arm control. So for me, with the traditional north-south, I have a very difficult time finishing it, because I got shitty shoulders, amongst other things. So trying to get my shoulder low enough to get through this is very, very difficult. But this is super, super easy. And again, it starts when I've gotten inside this arm. So when I'm in this position, all I'm going to do is go to the other side of his head and dive as deep as I can. There's no tension whatsoever in my arm. Imagine you want to like grab your junk or something, or in your thigh, either one of those. That's kind of how I want my arm that quickly. Right? Once I'm here, this hand's going to come back to this hip. And then I'm going to plant his face and arm into the mat. All right, so you have to look at the angle that I get to. I really want to create a lot of pressure. So this is the pressure. So this is not comfortable for him. All right? It's not going to choke him. I mean, maybe, possibly. That's not the goal here. I want him to want to get this arm out. So I'm trying to torque that arm. And once I feel him trying to get the arm out, I give him a little bit of space. Once the arm comes out, I immediately control the arm. Now I'm going to come in a little bit. I align my rib cage on one side of his neck. My bicep is on the other side of his neck. 
Now here's where it gets different than what you're probably used to. Instead of just sliding back and dropping my shoulder down, that's not what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna drive all of my weight into my arm and I'm gonna come up on the point of my elbow. All right? So I drive in, I come up on the point of my elbow. I release and go to his shoulder and then my hips square and I walk back. All right? So again, we start here. Dive it in deep. Plant. All right? He wants that arm back. I give him the space. I got to control this arm. If I'm not controlling this arm, he's going to be have an easier time to defend. Bring my hips in so that my rib cage is aligned on one side of his neck. If you want to make sure you're doing it correctly, see if you can just squeeze. You can tap there, almost, you're good. All right? So now you just drive in on the point of your elbow. Hand goes to the shoulder. So if you kept doing it, <laughs> again, sorry. Get here, hand goes to the shoulder. Come back and then drive down. Cool. Works pretty well. All right, three, two, one. Questions on anything? Any questions? Yes, no, maybe so. No questions. I'll be a What? <laughs> Any questions at all, guys? We have like two minutes. <laughs> yes, no, maybe so. I should actually let you drill some more, then. All right. It has been my pleasure to be here and uh, train and teach you guys. Thank you very much for coming to my class. It means a lot to me. Hopefully some of this you can put in your game. If you uh, fuck up one of your friends back home or something I showed you, hit me up on Facebook, let me know. You have no idea how much it makes my day. <laughs> it makes me super happy. Um, but again, I'll be here next year at some of the other camps. So if I didn't get a chance to train with you this week, you know, hit me up or I'll catch you the next camp. All right, thank you very much. There was just an assassination. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's cheating. <laughs> Alright, that, that's a real prison. Alright, guys, thank you very much.